Hello, everybody. Recently, all we can think about is Yellowstone. It's been a while since we have been obsessed with the show since the early seasons were mere perfection. However, there is something about season 4 of the series. Even though we cannot claim yet that it's the best season ever, it's breathtaking and wastes not even a single second with unnecessary matters. Every scene is filled with brilliant dialogue and interesting developments that move the plot to somewhere that we have a hard time guessing. Even the side characters have a lot going on for them, which makes us root for multiple characters at once. Since everyone is presented in the most humane way possible, it's generally difficult to pick sides even if some rivalries are going on. And yes, there are always some rivalries going on. Therefore, the show never stops playing with our minds, forcing us to make some moral decisions alongside our anti-hero characters. Even if it's a difficult task to follow, we love it. In Episode 8 of Yellowstone, we watched Beth joining forces with Summer in an attempt to ruin Market Equity's evil plans for Montana. Beth has become a double agent throughout the episode, pretending to work for both sides. However, in reality, she was only working for her side, as we would expect from a character such as Beth Dutton. She convinced Summer to organize a massive protest at the airport construction site, then convinced Market Equities to kick the media off from the site. After this, she met with a local journalist and let her know that there will be some drama on the site soon, so she should wait nearby. Being comfortable with the lack of press, Market Equities directed some security forces to the area to force the protesters to leave the construction zone. Then, Summer attacked a security officer, as they initially planned with Beth, which led to her arrest. The incident was all over the local media, and Market Equities couldn't believe that someone let the press know about their plans. Then, they prayed so that the national news wouldn't hear about this, since they would lose control of the narrative in such a case. Well, Beth was thinking the same and therefore, she called New York Times and let them know what's been going on in Montana. In the upcoming episode, we will probably watch market equities being ruined on the national news as the NYT will probably side with the peaceful protesters instead of supporting the brutality of the security forces. Being ridiculed on national TV would highly upset the management of the market equities, forcing them to look for who caused such a mess. In our opinion, it wouldn't be difficult for them to assume Beth was behind all of these. That being said, Beth isn't a fool. She probably has a backup plan that will ensure that she has nothing to do with any of these. Regardless, Beth will continue to play for both sides and ultimately work for the interests of the Yellowstone Ranch. We also expect Jamie and John to finally have their highly expected confrontation ahead of the elections. As we all know, John decided to run for the governorship just for the sake of not allowing Jamie to get such a privilege. It's no secret that John normally has no interest in such a position. He only wants to be sure that Jamie is not the one that gets the position. Naturally, Jamie isn't happy with these developments as his dreams are crushed. Jamie is aware of the fact that John is too powerful to defeat. Every politician in the state owes something to him, making it impossible for them to not support John. On the other hand, the only thing that Jamie owns is his name, which is also given by John. All these put Jamie into a difficult position. Nevertheless, as Garrett reminded in the last episode, he can always turn this to his advantage. In doing so, his first step will be to agree on some rules with John to determine what will be out of the table during the campaigning period. We're not sure how will John respond to such an idea, as he seems to gave up on Jamie already and has no interest in making him content. Jamie will also try to get leverage against John by strengthening his hand against some prominent figures of the state by making them out of him. Jamie isn't a very strong character. However, he is highly open to manipulation, and when he is manipulated, he can be a great tool on the way to success. In this episode, we expect to watch both Jamie and John putting their cards on the table and openly threatening each other. Last but certainly not least, we expect to watch some developments on the sudden killing of the sheriff in the previous episode. The incident was not only sudden but also tragic as John and Rip found themselves in a clash with some burglars. Unfortunately, while all the civilians managed to survive, the sheriff lost his life on the scene. The incident felt like came out of nowhere at the time. However, we expect it to gain meaning in the upcoming episode. Either the thieves will be revealed to have some connections with some powerful figures in the state, or the incident will contribute to John's election campaign as he will be presented as a hero who is determined to preserve the legacy of the late sheriff. Regardless, we expect this tragic event to be thoroughly explored in the upcoming episode.
What are your expectations from the ninth installment of Yellowstone Season 4? Do you think we will get an epic ending for this season? Who are you rooting for, Jamie or John? Let us know what you think in the comments below, and don't forget to like, subscribe and share the video. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.